ಮುದ್ದುಸ್ವಾಮಿ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತರ್ಸ್ ಕಾಂಪೋಸಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅನ್ ಎಕ್ಲೆಕ್ಟಿಕ್ ಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂಗೀತ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯ ಅಂಡ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಥ್ರೂಔಟ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತರ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಿವ್ಲಿ ವಿಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಸೆವರಲ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರಸ್ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ದರ್ಶನಂ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ ಅಟೆಂಪ್ಟ್ ಟು ವಿಸಿಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಅ ಗ್ಲಿಂಪ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಮಿರಿಯಡ್ ಫೆಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತರ್ಸ್ ಕಾಂಪೋಸಿಷನ್ಸ್ ತಿರುವಯ್ಯಾರು is an ancient Shaivite shrine on the banks of Kaveri in the Chola country. Sung about in the Tevaram hymns of Thirunyana Sambandar, Appar and Sundaramurthy Swamigal. The presiding deity is Shiva as Ayyar Appar and Devi as Aramvalartha Nayaki or Dharma Samvardhani. The temple has been patronized by the Cholas, especially Rajaraja I, followed by his successors however the temple has undergone extensive renovation under the nayaks and marathas of tanjavur the shrine of devi as dharma samvardhani has been renovated in the 20th century by the nagarattars the community of chettiars the temple campus is vast accommodating swami and ambal through two different entrances Both these entrances are marked by grand gopuram structures. The corridors of the temple houses shrines for many deities and the popular ones include Artkondar on the southern side followed by Ganesha, Subramanya, Kailashanatha and more. Upper was blessed by the vision of the sacred Kailasha Parvatam here in this kshetram. To commemorate this we have a kailaya kshetram on the southern and the northern corridor of the shrine of ayyarappar the dikshitar kirtanam on tiruvayyar kshetram is dharma samvardhani in the raga madhyamavati set to rupakatala dharma samvardhani ಧನುಜ ಸಮರ್ತನಿ ಧರ್ಮ ಸಂವರ್ಧನಿ ಧನುಜ ಸಮರ್ಧನಿ ಧರ್ಮ ಸಂವರ್ಧನಿ ಧನುಜ ಸಮರ್ಧನಿ ಧರ್ಮ ಸಂವರ್ಧನಿ ದಮುಜ ಸಂವರ್ಧನಿ ಧರ್ಮ ಸಂವರ್ಧನಿ ದಮುಜ ಸಂವರ್ಧನಿ ಧರ ಧರಾತ್ಮಜೆ Here we are at the Thiruvayar Kshetram, reverentially referred to as Panchanadiswara Kshetram. This is one of the most ancient Shiva Kshetrams in the Kaveri Delta on the banks of Kaveri River. This has been visited by the Tevaram Acharyas, Trinyana Sambandar, Appar and Sundaramurthy Swamigal. So has Manikavachakar. 
they've all celebrated this town to be a very happening temple way back in the 6th and the 7th century swami here is panchanadeeshwarar or ayyarappar devi is dharma samvardhini arambalartha nayaki the one who propagates dharma one who nourishes and propagates dharma this uh, shrine has been visited by all the three of the carnatic trinity and the shrine is very closely associated with shri tyagaraja swami not very far from here is the samadhi of tyagaraja yes. swami a very iconic temple town here in fact muthu swami dikshitar has spent a good part of his life here in the chola country and so he has visited this shrine pray to ayyarappar and arambalartha nayaki and have composed songs on both of them in fact tiruvayar is one of those kshetras which has compositions attributed to it by each of the members of the musical trinity tyagaraja swami muthu swami dikshitar as well as shama shastri each of these members of the trinity has compositions attributed to this sandhi the dharma samvardhini bal sandhi dharma samvardhini dhanura samvardhini is in madhyamavati raga on rupaka taala madhyamavati also has an interesting point about it if you see the ragas handled by the trinity each of the trinity has handled uh, myriad ragas however if you see the ragas that have been handled commonly by all three of them there are only 28 of them Oh. only 28 ragas which have compositions by tyagaraja swami dikshitar as well as shama shastri and madhyamavati is one such one uh, technically if you see it is a it is listed as a, a bhashanga chani raga in the sangeeta sampradaya pradarshini but that's a different discussion uh, of the 22nd mela shri is shri a mela by any chance so in the sampradaya that muthu swami dikshitar followed Uh, the raganga raga sampradaya as we call it okay the 22nd mela is shri and madhyamavati is listed as a janya raga of 22nd mela shri in subrama dikshitar sangeeta sampradaya pradarshini we find only one composition listed under madhyamavati by muthu swami dikshitar which is dharma samvardhini danuja samvardhini this is in the eighth vibhakti sambodhana and uh, the case being you call the name of the deity and you address the composition to him or her directly dikshitar here addresses devi as dharma samvardhani the one who propagates dharma and that she also suppresses the asuras dhanuja samvardhani mm. dhanu is one of the daughters of daksha prajapati who got married to maharishi kashyapa and to them were born 100 asuras and devi is the one who slain them during a samhara so he calls her as dhanuja samvardhani the one who slain the kids of dhanu dhara dharat maje ajay dayaya mam pahi pahi dhara dharat maje ajay you were born as parvati to parvata raja himavan you see meditated upon shiva requesting him to grant a boon so that devi is born as his daughter he wanted to groom her up as a child and get her married to swami so you were born and then again immediately ajay there is no janma for you you are not the one who is born like the mere mortals you know there is you don't fall in this vicious cycle of birth and death like how the vedic scriptures praise or describes parabrahma ajhayamano bahuta vijayate there is no birth to you but you take multiple forms in order to satisfy the requests of your devotees to protect them and for many such causes you take a form you come down here you live like us one amongst us blesses until such time you get back dayaya mam pahi pahi ah that is because you are the only one who can protect me i i am in you know i'm badly in need of help pahi pahi protect me protect me when you when you emphasize on that protect me request and double it up it just means you know i'm i'm in very bad need of your help we find Please this in come down now. we find this in other compositions also many compositions sri subramane namaste namaste, namaste. Mm. true so when when uh, when a request becomes you know doubled up like that it it is a sign of emphasis so please protect me immediately dhayaya you are an embodiment of compassion who but you can protect me and the construction of it dhayaya ma pahi pahi knowing now, now listening to your listening to the meaning that you just mentioned uh, it the the con- musical construction seems very apt daya ya ma pahi pahi dharm this kriti begins with the rishabha 
the Rishabha, Madhyama and Nishada Swaras are considered the Jeeva Swaras of this Raga Madhyamavati. The Pallavi begins with Dharma Samvardhani Re, re, re. If you see, it's, it's two hour terms of the Rishabha alone. Right. In fact, Subrahma Dikshtar Sanchari in Madhimavati also begins with the Rishabha Swara. So that is the importance of the Rishabha Swara. And in this composition, the Pallavi, Anupallavi, and Charana portions all commence with the Rishabha Swara. These are lessons for seekers of music. Re, re. How do you commence Madhimavati? The, the, re, 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 na. निर्मल हृदय निवासिनी निर्मल हृदय निवासिनी नित्य this anupallavi he enlists four such beautiful benign qualities of devi that which he uh, appreciates her for and uh, helps us also understand devi at a very deeper level nirmala hridaya nivasini that is uh, i think dikshitar starts discussing the place where devi resides very happy according to the uh, puranas and uh, other shastras which deals with devi upasana devi is to be invoked in various states at various levels she resides at shripuram the heavenly abode she is in the vama bhagam of sadashiva at kailasha she becomes parvati and then in multitude of forms she is established in the temples that we worship her but the most significant residing uh, place for devi is the hearts of her devotees the inner chamber she is there within us and dikshitar invokes that state of devi but she is very particular to reside in the hearts of people who are pure nirmala nirmala hridaya nivasi so she resides there in the heart of her devotees then the next quality is nityananda vilasini the state of eternal bliss in which devi is always i think that is the ultimate aim or what can be called as the moksha for her devotees all that we want is to stay in eternal bliss which you are which you are of you are in the state of eternal bliss accept me to be a part of you so i also get to enjoy it nityananda vilasini karma gnana vidhayini the one who governs the one who administers karma and gnana the phalam of both karma and gnana she is the one who blesses us with it she gives us that which we can hold that which we can have in us the capacity in us she understands it best and blesses us with both karma and gnana and finally she is also the giver of all that we desire kankshitartha pradhayini kankshitartha pradhayini all that you want the endless desires that you have you blessed by devi i think here uh, dikshitar gives us a clue and helps us understand at devi blesses us with all the material benefits that we want the material wealth as we live here is that's an integral part of your life here in this world and then attaining salvation so devi is in charge of both these and she helps us with what we want at whatever level we are nirmala hrade nivasini nityananda vilasini karma gnana vidhayini vidhayini kankshitartha pradayini same goes for the pallavi mm. dharma samvardhani dhanuja samvardhini uh, and nishadam also is a one of the jeeva swaras of madhimavati raga oh 
if you also observe the construction of this composition the pallavi anupallavi and charana all the three sections of this composition begin with the rishabha nirmal hridaya nivasi nirmal rimama pallavi dharma ri ri the charana also begins with the rishabha swara so the rishabha swara is very uniquely highlighted in this entire composition the rishabha is uh, one of the central notes of this composition interestingly it is uh, here in trivayar the panchanadeeswara kshetram rishabha deva was born nanadi's birthplace according to the puranas is identified to be trivayar so rishabha <laughs> swara and the the avatar of rishabha this <laughs> interesting pallavi makes a statement establishes the raga tadari rina tadarala na 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 that is the flow of the raga in the pallavi in the other pallavi tadarala expands tadarala la tadarala la 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 tadarala ri goes all the way to the tarasthai shanja how do i go to the shajja in madhimavati answer is in the composition of the mahans like mr swami dikshit said for a seeker of madhimavati it has all the answers beautiful madhav sodari sundari madhyamavati shankari madhav sodari sundari madhyamavati shankari madhurya vadvijrumbini maga இந்த சரணம் தீட்சிதர் டிஸ்கிரைப்ஸ் தர்ம சம்வர்தினி ஆஸ் மாதவ சோதரி ஆர் த சிஸ்டர் ஆஃப் மாதவ ஆர் மகாவிஷ்ணு சைவ சித்தாந்தா கன்சிடர்ஸ் மகாவிஷ்ணு டு பி எ ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் தேவி வென் இட் கம்ஸ் டு ஹிஸ் ரிலேஷன்ஷிப் வித் ஷிவா வி ஹாவ் திஸ் வெரி இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் ஹரி அர்தா சிமிலர் டு அர்தனாரீஸ்வர வேர் த லெஃப்ட் ஹாஃப் ஆஃப் த டிவைன் ஃபிசிக் ஆஃப் ஷிவா இஸ் ஃபில்ட் அப் வித் மகாவிஷ்ணு ஸோ ஹியர் இன் த தேவாரம் வேர்சஸ் ஆஃப் திருவையாறு அப்பர் ஆல்சோ சேஸ் அரியலால் தேவி இல்லை ஐயன் ஐயாரனார் கேஸ் பட் ஃபார் ஹரி ஊட் பி அ பெட்டர் ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் தேவி ஃபார் ஐயார் அப்பர் ஆர் பஞ்சநதீஸ்வரா ஆஃப் திருவையாறு ஸோ இட்ஸ் வெரி இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் டு நோட் ஹவு அப்பர் ஆல்சோ சஜஸ் தட் மகாவிஷ்ணு இஸ் அ ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் தேவி அண்ட் தீட்சிதர் டிஸ்கிரைப்ஸ் தர்ம சம்வர்தினி டு பி அ சிஸ்டர் ஆஃப் மகாவிஷ்ணு மாதிரி சோதரி சுந்தரி சுந்தரி ஷி ஹூ இஸ் ஜஸ்ட் பியூட்டிஃபுல் the alankaram of dharma samvardhani here you know you it's, it's, it's just you you feel spellbound uh, by the mere sight you, you just freeze there for a moment she is all beautiful then of course we find the word madhyamavati the raga mudra the raga mudra which is explicitly called out now in muthusamba dikshit krutis we find that broadly two types of raga mudras one where it is explicit like this or in vata api ganapati bhajayam hamsa dhvani bhushita herambham where the raga mudra is called out nitya kalyani in the kalyani kirtan so on uh, and then there is another variety where the raga mudra is suchata raga mudra a suchata an indicative raga mudra for example in shrimatra bhutam we find soma sakam nata shuka sanakam and when you sing it together it becomes soma sathanata kannata which is indicative of kannada kannada the ragam which it is set in but here of course it is madhyamavati in as plain Uh, as explicitly as one can mention so i'm curious what does madhyamavati mean madhyamavati is a beautiful raga but what does it mean in the context of dharma samvartini amba uh, but given that this is a dikshitar composition and that he is so much into shastras there are four stages of speech a word for example can evolve in four different stages uh, you have the para the pashyanti madhyama and vaikari para is that stage of a word where it is just pure which just emanates from within 
there is no adultery in it it's just pure and then you have madhyama the third one where the uh, unadulterated word the choice of word becomes verbalized it's given a form yeah and that giving of a form is done with your mental ability so there the jnana acts and between these two stages you have the evolving part which is the pashyanti there uh, in the, it is not that it is adulterated but at the same time the word which had uh, which was purely out of uh, you know uh, the, the pure form of it starts evolving into a thought process and that is where the madhyama occurs the third stage so the evolution is where pashyanti the second stage is and the fourth is when it becomes literally verbal when you when you speak it out in all these four stages one has to have a kind of a correlation if only every word that you utter goes through this synchronized process your speech becomes meaningful and this uh, notion of speech this speech motif uh, is also seen in the next line madhurya vag vidhrumbhini the one who blesses us with a uh, delectable speech i think in the shri vidya upasakas they 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 pray to devi that they get to conquer what their mind thinks and uh, you know the, that which comes out as words so there is a kind of a synchronization that one will have to achieve uh, in the four stages so para is that epitome stage where it is very pure then you have the pashyanti which is more like the ichcha shakti acting on it madhyama is where the jnana shakti works so it coats it with a verbal form and the final verbal form is the kriya shakti your speech so ambika shakti to uh, the uh, ichcha then the jnana and finally the kriya this transition happens purely by the blessings of devi and devi who is the mahadeva kutumbini the last she is also shankari and mahadeva kutumbini the wife of shiva the one who defines the family of shiva so she is the binding force there it's a remarkable usage mahadeva kutumbini i think that uh, adikshitar has this habit of picking popular phrases from lalita sahasranamam in uh, you know either using it exactly the same way or sometimes he goes for a mild translation or uh, you know uh, an equivalent word probably and i think sadhashiva kutumbini is a popular phrase in uh, lalita sahasranamam and this here becomes mahadeva kutumbini the I, madhyama of madhyamavati also comes in the lalita sahasranamam yes that is also there in the lalita sahasranamam the four uh, parts of uh, speech is also there in lalita sahasranamam and uh, i think dikshitar being an expert himself has brought it in beautifully to imbibe it with the raga mudra madhav sodari sodari ripa baba that phrase is a quintessential vakra usage or why do you uh, call it quintessential dikshitar's usage so if you see in muthusamy dikshitar's composition approach or approach to ragas the vakratva is of extreme significance uh, we find several examples of this vakratva that he highlights even in a seemingly what we call today as simple ragas or scalar ragas uh, a simple vakratva introduces a layer of abstraction mm madhava sodari there is an abstraction of the raga that is created and of course the musical phrase that is used for the word madhyamavati the raga mudra mm madhyamavati tarala ra ma ga tha the red minds think like palin suka ma akshi so that that phrase that is used to denote the raga mudra also is central to madhyamavati sadhu jan chit ranjani shashwat guru gokh jan साधु जन चित रंजनी शाश्वत गुरु मुख जननी बोध रूपिणी निरंजनी भुवन शिदूरित भंजनी बोध रूपिणी निरंजनी भुवन शिदू विश्व विलसी पाद 
ಸಹಜ ವಿಶ್ವ ವಿಲಾಸಿನಿ ಪಂಚನದಿ ಶೋಲಾಸಿ ಪಾದಜ ವಿಶ್ವ ವಿಲಾಸಿನಿ ಪಂಚನದಿ ಶೋಲಾಸಿ ವೇದ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸಿನಿ ವಿಧಿ ಹರಿಹರ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಿನಿ ಸೊ ಚರಣಂ ಸಹ ಮುತ್ತುಸ್ವಾಮಿ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತರು we have talked about it in the previous episodes of dikshita kshetra darshanam as well are veritable essays in the raga there are two approaches that one finds in dikshita skrutis one where there is a build up starting from the madhyasthayi all the way to the tarasthayi culminating in a madhyamakala passage and another style where there is one build up from the adhara shajja to maybe the tarasthai shajja or shaban comes back to the adhara shajja the madhyasthai shajja and then again there is a second crescendo leading up to the madhyasthai right so in this composition dharma samvardhini we find the second uh, style and then as i said comes back to this the charanam that starts the rishabha comes back to the shajja and then commences a second flight into the tarasthai ಸಾಧುಜನ ಚಿತ್ತ ಸಾಧುಜನ ಚಿತ್ತ ರಂಜನಿ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಗುರುಗುಹ ಜನನಿ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾಂಪೋಸಿಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಸಂವರ್ಧಿನಿ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತರ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಹರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ದಟ್ ಶೀ ರಿಸೈಡ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಹೌ ಶೀ ಇಸ್ ಚಿತ್ ವಿಲಾಸಿನಿ ಹೃದಯ ನಿವಾಸಿಮಲ ಹೃದಯ ನಿವಾಸಿನಿ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಹಿ ಗೋಸ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ಸೇ ಹೌ ದಿ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಡೆಕೊರೇಟೆಡ್ of her devotees the conscience of her devotees that is decorated or ornamented by her presence she occupies it she contains it completely and sits there and rules them i think it is by this entry of devi that your the the vak chaturyam or your control over your speech and picking up the choicest words to to speak something or to debate or to argue and win i think it is the devi sitting inside you uh, who who speaks out and shashwata guruguha janani the vagyakara mudra guruguha of the guruguha mudra she becomes his mother in every birth of his so far but he is ultimately going to rest in her which means she is going to continue as his mother so this eternal motherhood which dharma samvardhini uh, you know takes up on dikshitar and likewise on all her devotees i think that is established by calling her as shashwata guruguha janani and then moves on to bodha roopini niranjani niranjana is also found in the lalita sahasranam yes that's another nama from the lalita sahasranam and she is bodha roopini she is moksha herself we don't uh, look at moksha as a separate entity soaking in her is moksha so if one like mutuswami dikshitar is capable of understanding her and dwelling deep in her and reside in her as they live in this world then they are already in a state of bliss they have already attained moksha still continue to be here i'm i'm just imagining uh, you know dikshitar sitting with his veena and composing this song in this very corridor soaking Trilliar. in the bliss called dharma samvardhini and uh, you know living in that state of moksha as he sings this accompanied by his veena for dharma samvardhini a remarkable image <laughs> and the, like i said it uh, sadhu jana starts from rishabha the madhyasthai rishabha and bhuvane shidurita banjani so the madhyasthai rishabha the tarasthai rishabha bhuva risa bhuvane shi durita banjani uh dikshitra again speaks about how devi is the ultimate point from which everything originates and in which everything finally dissolves she is bhuvane shi she is the ruler of all the three worlds as she creates it according to the tantric traditions finally she is also into bhanjana or durita bhanjani the one who is very quick in destroying the obstacles in our lives you know the obstacles that her devotees face so she is very quick in clearing it off for us then we move on to the madhyamakala passage which is a hallmark of all dikshitar krutis padaj vishwa vilasini panchanadi sholasi panchanada kshetra as uh, trivaya is referred to so padaja vishwa vilasini from whose feet the vishwa is created the entire universe here dharma samvardhini peedam as the shrine at trivaya is called she sustains dharma as a mark of this act of sustaining dharma she has her right feet kept an inch before her left 
So it's not like how in the other temples the deity stands still in a in a balanced pose. Here her right feet is an inch uh, ahead. So it's like she is on her way to sustain dharma. She retains it always, uh, and telling that it is from her padha or the tiruvadi from which the bhuvana flowers, the entire universe flowers. I think dharma is the cord with which she contains it. So dharma protects that which has been created by her. Dharma finally is that point in which all her creation should rest to be sustained. That way, when when Dikshitar says that it is from her feet that the universe originates, Padaja Vishwa Vilasini, <laughs> and that her iconography is subtly included in that, Remarkable. she being Remarkable. Dharma Samvardhini. <laughs> Panchanadi Sholasini, Panchanadi Kshetra Triviyar. I think the Kshetra is also brought in, but interestingly, Tir uh, Ayyar, as the Kshetra is called. Uh, is literally translated into Panchanada Kshetram or that Kshetra which has five rivers running across it, around it. Uh, but you know, a little study into history, we see that of the five rivers which today's context makes the Panchanada Kshetram, two of them were not even in existence when this temple was first visited by the Tevaram authors. That would be the 6th or 7th century? Yes. Oh. That is when Trinyana Sambandar or Upper or Sundaramurti Swamigal had visited uh, mm. the Panchanatha Kshetram. But still they call it as Ayyar. Mm. Uh, I think some scholars opain and even according to the Purana of uh, Trivayar Kshetram authored in Tamil, there is this reference to how the Moolamurti, Panchanadishwara as he is called today or Ayyar Upper as the Tamil uh, name goes, the Moolamurti is a Swayambu Murti, a gigantic one in fact, where it is, the Murti is composed of pebble-like pieces of sand. Hmm. In Tamil, we have uh, Ayre Meen, a particular variety of fish, which is slightly a pebble shaped one. And uh, I think the Moolamurti here, the Swayambu Lingam, as he emanated, is a composition of such pebble like sand granules. And hence he is called as Ayarar, the one whose Thirumeni is made up of pebbles that which looks like an Ayre fish the variety of fish that it is and hence he is called as Ayyar Appar and the Kshetram becomes Thiru Ayyar. Much later when the Cholas expanded the water table management, they ensured that the benefits of Kaveri cuts across the entire Chola country. They have come up with an efficient system of water distribution with Kaveri a single point of origin. Uh, I think the other rivers distributaries have originated from the primary source which is Kaveri and given that Trivayar is very close to Kallanai from where the distribution begins, it's only very natural for people to identify these five streams and probably think that Tiru Ayyaru means a land of five rivers and that gets translated into Sanskrit as Panchanada Kshetram and Swami becomes Panchanadishwara. But for that, the Ayyar upper name has a different meaning in Tamil. Anyways, when Dikshitar was here, it becomes Panchanada Kshetram with the five rivers, uh, you know, causing the fertility of this region as we see it today. And so Swami is Panchanadishwarar and Dikshitar identifies Dharma Samvardhini to be the reason of Panchanadishwarar's uh, Mana Ullasam or his happiness. Veda Shastra Vishwasini Vidi Hari Hara Prakashini. She is the one who is completely understood by the Vedas. The Vedas are in fact dependent on her. They extend their Vishwasam or their firm belief in Dharma Samvardhini. Confidence. <laughs> the Vedas and the Shastras both take confidence in Dharma Samvardhini. It's interesting to note how Dikshitar subtly again brings in this very important fact that the Vedas are there as a support system to our Devatas and it is not the other way. <laughs> so the Devatas are firm. They are always there. They are eternal. The Vedas support the system there. Yeah, but they, they are not the origin, point of origin as such. So she is Veda Shastra Vishwasini. Vidi Hari Hara Prakashini. Vidi is Brahma and Hari is Mahavishnu. Hara here in this case is Rudra. So the three primary gods who are put in charge of Srishti, Stiti and Samhara. Creation, sustaining it and the destruction component. So how all these three have been uh, blessed by Dharma Samvardhini. How she enlightens them. She illuminates them to perform the duties as they have been ordained by Sadhashiva. And Muthuswami Dikshtar illuminates us all <laughs> with a blissful creation in Madhyamavati set in this, in the pristine surroundings of Trivayar. 
and offers us a glimpse a darshan of into this kshetra padaj vishwa vilasini panchanadi sholasi padaj vishwa vilasini panchanadi sholasi veda shastra vishwasi vidhi hari har prakashini dharma sam ವಿಲಾಸಿನಿ ಪಂಚ ನದಿ ಶೋಲಾಸಿ ವೇದ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ವಿಶ್ವಾಸಿ ವಿಧಿ ಹರಿಹರ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಿನಿ ಧರ್ಮ ಸಂವರ್ತನಿ ಧನುಜ ಸಂವರ್ತನಿ ಧರ ಸಂಪರ್ಧನೀ 